Well, hello, I'm Dr. Shante Haynes from Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, and it is my pleasure, it's my privilege to bring you an encouraging word today. My goal, though, is not that you just be encouraged and inspired, but that you be transformed by the word of God. So I ask today that you allow it to penetrate your heart and your mind as we go before the Lord. So let's go ahead and bow. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we do thank you. We bless you. We honor you for another opportunity to hear your word. Lord, we ask that it penetrates so deeply in our hearts and our minds, Lord, that we will be forever changed and we will be able to do the things that you have purposed and you've called us to do. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. I ask that each and every person that hears it uh, not only receives it, God, but they walk it out. They run with it. And I'm just going to depend upon you, Lord, that not only will you allow me, that you will use me as a vessel fit for your use, God, today, so that others might hear your word. I pray that you would take what you have placed on the inside of me and you deliver it in such a way that it will penetrate their hearts and minds, altering their destinies and allowing them to be all that you've called them to be. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, I will tell you, I'm excited about this word. Uh, we're going to Jeremiah. We're going to start there. Jeremiah chapter number one, verse five. And the Bible says, I chose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And of course he was talking to Jeremiah and Jeremiah was identifying this, but some of that is germane for us today. So the title today is, I know who I am. I know who I am. See, he says to Jeremiah, I chose you before the foundation of the world. He chose you before you were placed in your mother's womb. God chose each and every one of us. He knitted us together. It says in verse two, that I was knitted together in my mother's womb. But he says, we are all chosen for such a time as this, for such a purpose that he has for us. He says, I formed you or I fashioned you. I know what I put together. You know, everything that is put together doesn't necessarily match, but God knows what he has matched us with. He said, and then I set you apart. That means you are uniquely designed for a specific purpose. Not everybody can do what you do. And you kind of wondered, I mean, some of you are wondering, why do I do what I do the way that I do it? And people look at you like for me, sometimes they'll say, you're like the ever ready battery. When do you take a break? When do you take a day off? God uses me in a different way. And instead of taking it as offensive, I take it as a compliment. No, I'm not like everybody else. I don't have to just focus on one thing. I can do a multitude of things all at the same time. I can be a serialpreneur as opposed to a solopreneur because that's the way God created me. But there's nothing wrong with you if a solopreneur is what you do. That's the way he formed and he fashioned you. That's the way he set you apart. But then he says to Jeremiah, I appointed you. He appointed Jeremiah as a prophet. But I'm here to tell you that God has appointed you for something special too. You've got to know who you are. And that's why today I want to talk about, I know who I am. Now, recently I did a five-day challenge for the ladies that are in my group. I call them treasured women because they are treasured. They're going through, they're transitioning, but they are treasured. Even in the midst of what seems like absolute chaos and disappointment and disruption, and even sometimes despair and discouragement, you're still treasured vessels. You were handpicked and formed by God to do something. And so we don't allow what we're going through to dissuade us and to keep us down. I, I always encourage, I want you to see the collateral beauty, not just the collateral damage. There's always something good to run alongside, something that seems disastrous and it's not. So one of the things that we did was unwrapping our sparkle in this holiday season. 
and this solo season. Unwrapping your sparkle in any season is important. In other words, you need to know who you are. You need to know that you shine brightly. You need to know that you make a difference, that when you walk in the room, the atmosphere changes. You need to know what you bring to the table. You need to value who you are. And that's what I want you to get out of today's message. You know who you are. And it's not because you pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps, but it's because you have recognized who created you. That the sovereign Lord of the entire universe handpicked you. He chose you. He formed you. He fashioned you. He made you. And because he made you and he doesn't make any junk, you are fearfully, as it says in the 139th Psalm, verse 14, fearfully, remarkably, and wonderfully made that you should know. We praise God because he made us and he made us remarkable. That's what it says. But then I want to take you to Ephesians chapter number one, because one of my favorite parts, he starts off and says, you are blessed. You are blessed with every single spiritual blessing. You are blessed. You are chosen. You are predestined. Before destiny even shows up, you are already pre-done, pre-formed to get there. He knows where you're going to go. It's not a stop sign when you come into calamity, when you come into some situation, some partner walks out, some rejection that happens. It is not a stop sign, but it's a yield sign for you to just go ahead and get on the highway to your destiny. Get on the road to where you're supposed to go. I feel this today for somebody who is trying to play small, somebody who won't throw their rock, somebody who won't be unleashed, somebody who won't do everything that they're called to do because other people are trying to tell you what you can do and what you can't do. But I'm here to say in Ephesians chapter number one, God says you are blessed, you are chosen, and you are predestined to get there. He adopted you. That means he hadn't picked you out. He favored you. That's what it says. He redeemed you. He bought you with a precious price. He's forgiven you. And then he turned around and said, and I sealed you. So don't let anybody try to penetrate that seal, try to break that seal, try to get in there so that manipulation happens and you don't do all of what you're called to know. Because it tells us in Jeremiah 29 and 11, we got to come back with the word, right? 29 and 11 says that I know the plans that I have for you. We like to quote that part. What are the plans? They're for good. They're not for evil. God always has your best interest at heart and he has got plans to prosper you. He has those plans. Why? If you continue to read it, um, the 12th and 13th and 14th verses, it says, because you're going to call upon me and I'm going to listen to you. You are heard. How many of us want to be heard in life? There are things that we keep trying to say and it's like our voice keeps getting muffled by other people's opinions and what other people think that we should do. And it's like, can somebody just hear me? Hear what I am saying, you hear my heart, know that I'm coming from a place of, of good intentions, that my motives are right. Hear me, everybody wants to be heard. And then he says, if you search for me, you go search for me, you will find me. He says, wait a minute, I'm gonna see you too. I'm gonna be found, you're gonna be found. I see you and I hear you because I got plans to prosper you. He said, and ultimately I'm gonna restore you that whatever was taken away, I'm gonna bring it back. I'm giving you your fortunes back. I'm your exceeding great reward. It says in Genesis 15, I know that's what God has not only for you, but he has it also for me. And I just came by to remind you, know who you are. Know that you were created by God. Know that he has something great for you. Now, I have to be honest that I recognize the fact that we go through some disappointments in life. People do walk out on us. We go through some devastation. We get overwhelmed. Some of us go through divorce. Some of us are end up widowed. Some of us have our partners walk out on us in business. Some of us are solopreneurs because we can't find the right people. I recognize that. So I've got an answer for you on that one too. And that is 2 Kings chapter number four, verses one through seven. When the widow comes to Elijah and says, my husband is dead. What am I supposed to do now? The debtors are coming. And what does Elijah say? What do you have in your house? I came to remind you that no matter what you have gone through, yes, you have been cre created to be this great and mighty force to be reckoned with in this earth because God has designed it so. But when calamity comes, when something bumps up against that, 
we tend to then want to cower back or shrink back. And I'm telling you, don't do it. Don't do it. You still have something left. And that's what I reminded the women as well, that what left, what is left, let me say it clearly, what is left is better than what left you. You still have something in your hand. That oil that is still in your hand is still yet valuable. And it's probably more so valuable than it has ever been because you have been through. You know, we talk about a tea bag. You don't know what flavor you are until you dip it into some hot water. Mm. Bread doesn't rise until it's put in the oven to bake. And all of a sudden, it really just it bursts forth. Yes, you can add some yeast in it burst forth, but it doesn't stay there until it's baked. Oh, and the aroma that happens when we're put in the fire, when we're heated up. Mm. There's so much that does come out. But yes, I want you to figure out and find out what you still have. Reflect on that. Because see, a little put in God's hands ends up being much. So plant the seed. Jesus says the grain, it's just a small grain of a mustard seed size faith can move mountains. It can be large trees. So don't diminish. Don't despise the small beginnings, the seed that you get to plant, plant a seed of faith today, knowing that God has created you for greater, that God wants you to prosper, that God has chosen you, that God has predestined you, that God has made you fearfully and wonderfully, that God has formed you and he has set you apart and he has appointed you and he has anointed you to do something great. I guess you can figure out that. One, well, let me just tell you this. One of my favorite passages of scripture that I always quote is Colossians 3 and 23. Whatever you do, you do it with all of your heart as unto the Lord and not to man. I am passionate about that. And what it says is that mediocrity and average, I'm allergic to that. I want excellence. I'm going to do everything as if I'm doing it to the Lord. You know, there was a story that has been told of a young boy, um, his mother takes him to a piano concert and he's just learning to play the piano, just a young tyke. And, you know, he wanders off. He only knows how to play chopsticks, do, 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 do. you know, one finger pecking chopsticks, not major not massive or anything but he wanders off he has to go to the restroom and his mom is sitting there and everybody is is sitting in the audience you know and it's electrified with this thought of this anticipation of what's getting ready to come because the maestro is going to come out and he's going to play and it's going to be fantastic it's just going to be awesome they're all coming to hear the master play but this little boy wanders out on stage and he sees the grand piano there and he sees the chair and he climbs up on it. Mom is probably gasping in her seat going, oh, what am I going to do? My son is out there and he begins to play chopsticks. And the audience is sitting there going, that's not what we came here for. There's a little disruption. There's you know some commotion in the, in the audience and the maestro behind the curtain hears what's going on and he looks out on the stage and he sees the little boy playing chopsticks and he comes out on stage and everyone's like, oh, well, what's gonna happen and he sits down next to him and says keep playing and as that little boy plays chopsticks on the piano on this grand piano in this grand auditorium with an audience looking on he's playing chopsticks and the maestro, the master maestro, starts playing around him this concerto and he works it in. And as he's playing, doom, 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 he is playing, doom, he's just doing all of these riffs and rolls and he's doing it all. And when he finishes, both of them stand up and take a bow and everyone roars in the audience because it was grand. So what do we take from that? Your little chopsticks becomes a concerto when you allow the master to infuse it with his passion, to put something on one side and on the other, anointing you to do remarkable things. 
wondrous works. He says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't worry about the little that you have. Put it in the master's hand and watch it grow. You need to know who you are. I'm bringing to you, God, my little. It doesn't seem like much, but in your hand, you can do great and mighty things with it. You can deliver some people. God, you can free some others. You can unleash those. You can unlock those. You can do all of that with the little that I bring to the table. So use me as you will, Father. That's what we call upon. Now, let me remind you also the 23rd Psalm. We say he is our shepherd and we shall not want for absolutely anything. But let me remind you in verse three, it says he anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows. That's who you are. You are anointed by God. Your cup will overflow. Fill up on his presence and allow it to then permeate not only your being, but permeate the atmosphere when you walk in the room. Things are going to change from this point forward. I know it because you know who you are. Ultimately, we get to 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has planned for you. I know it says the things that God has planned for those that love God, right? That's you. I love God. You don't love God. I don't know what's wrong with you if you don't, but I know you love him. So he says, I hasn't seen, it hasn't even been envisioned ear hasn't heard the ripple effect. Your voice really has not been resonating loudly like it should just yet. You might think you've got some influence, but I'm telling you there is more. You might think that you have caused a ripple. You're just that one little drop of water in a, an ocean, but it creates a ripple effect and it changes the whole game. You start seeing what it's doing. And I want to encourage you to do that. I want you to know who you are. And so today I recognize that often we listen to the voices of others and we allow them to direct our path and we should not allow them to direct the path of our life because sometimes we are holding back, we are stepping back, we are cowering back, we are looking back, we are playing small, we are not doing all of what we're called to do. Because of that, we're listening to the wrong voices. It's time today for me to be the gemologist, if you would, and give you the four C's. That's what I'm going to give you today. The four C's that are going to determine your value as well as your destiny. That first C is clarity. That's right. Clarity. Clarity on the creation and uh, of what God has given you and who God has created you to be will confirm you as well as give you confidence. Clarity on creation gives confirmation and confidence. See, that confidence is going to tell you where you're going to go. See, clarity says that we're removing the imperfections. And the ultimate goal is for you to be flawless, to be blameless. I hear Paul say, follow me as I follow Christ. Don't imitate anybody else, but try to be Christ-like, not like the other Christians, but try, try to be Christ-like. Follow what Jesus said. When you do that, you will recognize that in that mold, you and God got this. Be like the little boy. Your chopsticks turns into a concerto because you've got clarity on who created you. That's the voice that you listen to more so than anybody else in the world. Culture can try it, but your creator really knows it. That's how you know who you are. The second C that I'm going to talk about today is cuts. That means that's your shimmer factor. That's the reflection of light that you're going to have. That's the glow that you give. That's the fabulousness that you have in your life. That's how you then show up. And see, a lot of times we let others dim our shine and we shouldn't. You can't let others dim your shine. You probably saying, well, you know, I've been through some rejection. I've got some roots of bitterness. I haven't been forgiven like I should. I've been messing up. There might be some prejudices in my, my background. There might be some injustices that I have committed, but those cracks in your life allow the light to shine through. When you get them fixed, when you get them fashioned together, See, a lot of times we want to go around and we really should say, I don't look like what I've been through, but that's about the appearance on the outside. I know I don't look like what I've been through, but I say this to you, that your walk and your talk, your life should reflect that you have overcome. It should reflect what you've been through. That's right. It should reflect the appearance 
shouldn't look like what you've been through, but your walk should reflect the fact that you are an overcomer. Those cracks, a crack pot allows you to shine through and shine brightly. It might've put you on your butt, but you were cut from a different cloth. And so now that you have been cut, you can then show others the cracks of your life. And when you show them the cracks of your life authentically, they'll know that they can hear you, that you have heard them, that you have been where they are and you can take them to that next level. You need to shine. Don't let them dim you because of your cut. But the third one is carrot or your carrot weight. See, sometimes the weight may appear differently. That's the anointing that you have just because you don't look like or you haven't been cut like somebody else. In other words, God's not looking for imitators. He created you specifically. I told you you were set apart. You were fashioned. You were formed differently than others. See, some were cut to be on the stage, to be on a platform, to be uh, the preachers or the pastors at a specific congregation. And they've got a lot of people that are listening to them. But just because they're on the platform doesn't mean that their weight is heavier than someone that is in the pew. Let me say it to you this way. They might have the congregation that is listening to them on a Sunday morning, but you might have a congregation that listens to you on your job Monday through Friday. You might have one on your business because you are the owner and you've got people that are working for you and you change that atmosphere. You might do it because you are coaching or you have a community of people that are resonating with you from all walks of life. They don't live in the same geographical location. You have the ability. Your weight is just as weighty as someone else. Don't try to imitate them. You are created differently. You are handpicked. You were chosen before the foundation of the world. I have to go back to Ephesians chapter number one. You have been fashioned that way and your weight is just as weighty as theirs. Just because the cut looks a little bit different doesn't mean that the weight is not there. Your anointing is evident to others. Allow it to be so. Use your talents. Don't bury your talents. But the fourth one that I'm going to give you is color. And the ideal of the four C's is that it is colorless. I know my mom used to sing the song and I used to love it. We said, what color is God's skin? You know, it's black, it's brown, it's red, yellow, and white. Every man's the same in the good Lord's sight. He is colorless, he is spirit. And Paul said it this way. He says, there is now no more Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. We're all the same. We are God's children. You are his daughter or you are his son. He created you that way. And so it doesn't matter. Colorlessness, we are not looking that. We're removing all shades of any hints of anything else other than Christ. Let him reign and rule through you. Let him shine through all the cracks in your life, all the disappointments in your life, all the seeming disasters. Let the collateral beauty shine through. Be optimistic in everything that you walk into knowing that God has created you. You are destined to prosper and that's what you're going to do because you need to know who you are. Let's bow. God, I thank you. God, we bless you as we come together, knowing that it's all because of you. But thank you for blessing us by association. Thank you that we don't have to be anxious for anything. Thank you that the influence and the impact that you want us to have, we are going to walk into. We are not going to cower back. We're not going to look back, but we're going to look up. We're not going to settle for any mediocrity or anything less. We're going to then step out on faith, believing that excellence is a part of our DNA because we want to look more and more like you. Thank you, Father, for creating us to be the people that you called us to be for such a time as this. Thank you, Lord, that you've got purpose and destiny for us. Thank you, God, that we are going to be convicted to give you our yes and yes again. Even when it seems like there's a disruption, we give you a yes. Even when it seems like there's a disappointment, we give you a yes. Even when it seems like it's disastrous, we give you a yes. Calamity may come, chaos may be there, confusion might be there, but God, Give us clarity on who we are being called to be. And we are your children. Adjust our crowns. Lord, adjust our minds. Renew us so that we walk in everything that you've called us to. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. It's been my pleasure. It's been my pleasure.
And it is my hope that you will walk in everything that God has for you, that you will not shortchange us in this world, but you will use every single thing that he has given you, every single thing that you have been through for the glory of God. I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. You can find us online at h the number two h truth.org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.